Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Welcome back to r slash Entitled People, where people seem to think they can do whatever they want and get what they want just by being themselves. My friends, in this episode, you'll hear four stories. So the first story is going to be nice and short to warm you guys up. The second story, a spoiled daughter demands a crazy amount of money from her mother. The third, and the one you're here for, OP's mother-in-law has different beliefs when it comes to medicine. And for the final story, we'll lighten the mood a little bit with a story where a Karen uses OP and refuses to pay. My friends, buckle up, because today's episode is truly a wild ride, especially that story that you guys are here for. So with that said, I do hope you enjoy the stories today, and do hit that subscribe button for future Entitled People Tales. Let's dive in. So, this happened a few months ago. To set the scene, I'm in a Costco parking lot, and I've got my infant and a carrier strapped to my chest, so it's pretty obvious that I don't work here. I had just unloaded all of my bulk size goodies into the car, and was returning my cart to the corral because I'm not an animal. So, along the way, I saw a stray cart, and since I had a free hand, I opted to return it to the corral as well. As I'm walking back to my car, some Karen three spaces away from the corral tries to flag me down. Karen says, Wait there, I've only got a few more items to unload and you can take my cart. I told her, Nope, and didn't even break my stride and kept on walking. Karen says, What do you mean no? What's your name? I'm gonna talk to your manager. So at this point, I turn to walk backwards, I point to my baby, flip her a double bird, and turn back around so I wouldn't walk into a car. Karen's face turned bright red as I thought she was going to have an aneurysm, but she didn't say anything else, and the baby did not wake up either. Guys, what a quick way to shut a Karen down. Now, normally I don't approve of flipping somebody off because <laughs> that's just rude, but I've also read enough Entitled People stories to know that OP flipping off Karen and cutting it off right there potentially saved her from possibly escalating things and getting herself arrested. Am I right, guys? Am I right? We've all heard those stories. So, this story occurs on my wife's side of the family, so I have a second row seat rather than a front row for most of this. Now, my wife's Aunt Louise is a great lady. She and her husband live in the San Francisco Bay Area and bought their home in the late 1970s. After her husband passed a few years ago, she sold her home for over a million dollars and moved back to live close to her family. She's in her late 60s. So Aunt Louise has three children who are all in their 40s. The two oldest are nice and normal people. Her youngest, however, Kay, is a real piece of work. She meets all the criteria of a psychological diagnosis of narcissism. This is just one of literally dozens of stories that I could tell. First, some backstory about Kay's husband, Pedro. He was a good provider. About 10 years ago, things began going well and they began making pretty good money. To Kay, however, higher income meant more spending, and soon she was buying a new car every two years. They went on cruises and she had the latest and greatest gadgets. As the old MTV tagline used to go, too much is never enough. To augment her lifestyle, she would routinely run to her mom, Aunt Louise, with a sob story or another. We don't know the true figure, but I've heard rumors that Aunt Louise has given her more than $20,000 over the past few years. Kay and Pedro managed to keep their heads above water, but when COVID hit and the state of California had an economic shutdown, money became tight. Then in October, the company went out of business. He found another job, but was essentially starting his career over again. Now, naturally, they began fighting about money, and two weeks ago, it comes to a head. After hearing the blasphemous word no one time too many, Kay announces that she's getting a divorce. Being California, she naturally expected the courts were going to give her one last payday from this poor guy, and she would get their car, their house, his 401k, and generous alimony. However, in her greed, she forgot that Pedro had kept training his 401k to pay off credit cards. And all those papers about the house she was signing every couple of years was to refinance their house to pay off more credit cards. So there's almost no equity. And with having to start over his career, alimony wasn't going to be that great. So Kay does what she always does. She goes running to her mother, Aunt Louise. Aunt Louise is naturally sympathetic and urges Kay to try to reconcile, but failing that, she might be able to help her out. Literally two hours later, Kay texts Aunt Louise with a photo of a pricey condo and asks for $100,000 to cover her down payment and the cost to furnish it. Aunt Louise naturally pushes back, telling Kay that helping out did not mean give her $100,000. She had meant letting Kay live with her while she got back on her feet and writing a check for a security deposit for first month's rent and maybe helping with some car payments. 
So at this point, Kay totally flips out. Here are some things that my wife said that were direct quotes. I'm getting these third hand, so they might be slightly off. One, she says, I can't believe my own mother would be so selfish. Two, what difference does $100,000 make? You're not going to spend it all anyway. Three, just sell some of your stocks or something. Aunt Louise fortunately does have someone who manages her money, but she stays on a strict allowance. After Aunt Louise held out, Kay began polluting Facebook with passive-aggressive messages about finding out other people's true colors, clearly talking about her own mother. My wife is actually hoping that she calls to ask for help, specifically so she can let her have it with both barrels. <laughs> Yikes, guys. What a spoiled, spoiled woman Kay is. Let's just go on social media and passive-aggressively expose to the world what a horrendous woman your mother is, because she won't give you $100,000 for a down payment and furnishings. It definitely sounds like her and Pedro lived way, way above their means and bought too many things they can't afford. Draining your 401k to pay credit cards and refinancing your home every few years to pay credit cards. Yikes. Sounds like this woman needs a lesson from Dave Ramsey because those are terrible, terrible financial decisions, my friends. Right now, I have a lot of problems going on, with my mother-in-law on top of them. I'm fighting cancer for the second time in my life. I was first diagnosed when I was 14, and I fought it and won. I lived a happy and peaceful life until recently, when I had my health checked for job necessities, and surprise, I'm 30 years old and I have cancer again. This is secondary cancer, different organ and nothing to do with my first one. Fortunately, it's only stage 2 cancer. However, my oncologist warned that it's aggressive, it grows and spreads fast, and I could be stage 3 or more in a short period of time, so we had to act fast. Now, hearing that you have cancer is always devastating, but to me, it feels like something wants me dead very much. I was distraught that I'll have to go through all of this again, and it's very hard to fight, both physically and mentally, and any current or former cancer patient will agree on that. I had a surgery and now it's time for chemotherapy. The doctors decided on oral chemo that I can take it home and only have to go to the hospital to do blood tests and scans every few weeks, which is very good. I wouldn't have the strength to go there every day. I'm on sick leave from work now, and because of the treatment, I'm quite weak, and I've lost a lot of weight. Before that, my wife and I, we both had equal share of household chores. Some days, I do feel better than others. However, directly after every receive of chemo, even the simplest chores are often a physical impossibility for me. I try to do as much as I can, but my wife has been amazing. She doesn't care at all that I don't help around the house as much as I did. She's like, your only obligation now is to not die. So the other day, my mother-in-law comes over to visit, and she knows about my diagnosis. I was on the couch reading, and my wife was doing something around the house. Mother-in-law walks over to me and was like, Look at that. Lying on the couch as if you're on a beach. Aren't you ashamed of yourself? A grown man and lying down in the middle of the day while your poor wife is working as a slave. I told her, I just had chemo, I have a headache, I'm nauseous, and I don't feel good. She was like, a young man like you and you can't beat some silly cancer? You can't cure yourself with those chemicals. Nature products only. So later that day, my mother-in-law was talking to my wife in the kitchen. I didn't mean to listen, but I heard their conversation anyway. My mother-in-law was like, you really shouldn't let him take that poison he's taking or he's gonna die. That medication is poison, otherwise he wouldn't feel so bad. Doctors nowadays are totally stupid, you should seek herbal treatments instead. As all of that came from someone without any medical education and tries to be smarter than she actually is, my wife shut her up quickly and told her to stay away from things she understands nothing about. So the next day, I was gonna take some of my chemo as I'm scheduled. I've got to take it once a day and I prefer to do it in the morning because then I feel better in the evening and I can sleep better. But as I walked into the bathroom and opened the cabinets, there was no trace of my chemo bottles. They were gone, completely. I asked my wife if she moved them by chance and she said no. We looked around but realized it's pointless because they couldn't fall out of the cabinets and there's also no need to hide the chemo because we don't have children or pets who could accidentally swallow it. Then my wife remembers that just before leaving the day before, her mom went into the bathroom. She could have easily taken the bottles with her, considering her words about the toxicity of chemo. My wife turned into a dragon. She was literally almost spitting fire as she got dressed and stormed out of the house to go to her mother's house. I have never seen her so mad before. 
She came back half an hour later or so and told me that she demanded my medication from her mother and her mother admitted that she took my chemo and when she left the house, she threw it out. Now, obviously it's gone and we can't search through every garbage bin in the city, but just the fact that she did it blew my mind. My wife and her mom had a huge argument and my mother-in-law really thinks she did me a favor. She was like, Don't you see he's dying? Don't you see how fragile he's become? It's not cancer that's killing him, it's those pills. I got rid of them, I saved your husband, and this is how you thank me? By insulting me? So because of my mother-in-law, I missed a dose of chemo, which is very bad, and I had to go see my oncologist immediately. When I told him I needed more chemo, he was surprised and said, What happened to the chemo I gave you a short time ago? You couldn't have finished it already. And I was like, Well, you see doctor, my mother-in-law stole my chemo. He looked totally baffled, as if the fact that someone would steal someone else's chemo is ridiculously stupid. He prescribed me new bottles of chemo, and a new schedule on how I'm supposed to take it. And now I keep it in a cabinet with a lock. Even though my wife swore to me that my mother-in-law will never set foot in our house again. My friends, I don't even know where to begin with this one. I don't think I've read anything this absurd in a really, really long time, and I read a lot of crazy stories. I'm actually speechless. I don't know what the most crazy thing about this story is. Calling somebody lazy because of the side effects of chemo medication, or stealing the husband's medication and throwing it away because you don't believe in medicine. Guys, now I'm not cutting down naturopathy, and I'm not cutting down anybody's beliefs. But there's countless stories out there where people deny medicine and treatments, choose the natural way, and unfortunately they end up worsening their conditions, or even losing their lives. Guys, I know this story is absolutely ridiculous, so I'd love your opinions. Leave a comment below on what you think of this crazy, crazy story. Okay, so some backstory. I was 13 years old and lived in a really fancy neighborhood, and every year we have a best lawn competition. The prize for the winner is a $500 check. Some of my neighbors are really nice, but some are really rich snobs. So I was managing my parents' flower garden and was working really hard for about two hours, and when I finished, it looked really good. Then comes the entitled person, Karen. She was walking her dog and spotted me admiring my work. So this woman is generally an a-hole to everybody, so I wanted to avoid conversation, but she called out to me and the conversation went as follows. Karen says, Wow, did you do all this work? I told her, yeah, I was out working for the lawn competition. She then tells me I did a great job and do you think that you can do my lawn? I told her if you pay me by the hour, I'd be happy to work. So Karen agrees and pays me $10 an hour. So the next day, I do her very weedy lawn and I think I did pretty good. I pick up every single one of her weeds, I cut the grass, and I even buy some flowers for the patches of dirt where the large weeds used to be. After 4 hours of work, I knock on Karen's door to let her see the work, thinking she would be impressed. And I was very wrong. Karen says, Ew, what is this? Now, I was confused, but I wanted to see if I missed anything, and I asked, What? The grass. It's the wrong color. I told her the grass is green. What color is it supposed to be? And Karen says, Orange. I wanted my lawn to have fall colors, which I'm pretty sure is a made-up excuse. And I said, Um, you didn't say that. Well, you should have known. Now get out of here because you ruined my lawn. I'm not paying you. Karen then walks into her house and slams the door. I go home and start to plan my revenge. So around the neighborhood, I hear her bragging about her perfect lawn. About a week later, I stay up until 12, midnight. I go to the compost pile behind my house and gather up all the weeds I toss from my own garden. I go to Karen's house and spend another hour kicking up her flowers, adding bug baits, and replanting the weeds in her yard. That morning was the morning of the competition. By the morning, her garden had some bugs and looked like the house was abandoned. It was worth all the work to see her face in the morning. Imagine a toddler who just saw his favorite teddy bear get ripped to shreds. We didn't win the competition, but she came in last and was humiliated. Now, she knew it was me and tried to get me in trouble, but I asked her if she had proof. I also told the whole neighborhood about the situation, so the other neighbors began to dislike her too. Karen never spoke a word to me again, and eventually she moved away. Maybe because of the humiliation. Trust me, rich people care about their lawns very much. Guys, listen here. <laughs> I'm not even close to being rich, and I care about my lawn very, very much. I don't know about you guys, but there's nothing better to me than a fresh cut lawn that's healthy and green. 
Oh, and about the story, Karen definitely made up some BS to avoid paying for the work. Hey man, a Karen's got a Karen, right? If you don't pay for the work, you don't get to reap the end product. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash and title people. Guys, we survived another one. If you enjoyed the stories today, do hit that like button. And if you missed the last episode of our slash and title people, a Karen gets arrested for body checking a soldier during a 4th of July celebration. Absolutely outrageous. Check it out if you haven't, and I'll see you guys in the next one. I love you.